Welcome to Swayam online platform. The MOOC course is on urban local governance. And in today's video, we will have a panel discussion on urbanization, its challenges and the possible solutions. We have with us today eminent and erudite scholars from around the academic world on urbanization. I would like to introduce the team. We have Dr. Vidivyan from Political Science Department, Associate Professor, Madras Christian College. Welcome, sir. We have Dr. Vasuprada from Communication uh, Department, Madras Christian College. Welcome, ma'am. We also have amidst us Dr. Sudha from the Department of Political Science, Madras Christian College. A very warm welcome to one and all. Today's discussion, uh, I thought we will discuss on urbanization, its challenges and possible solutions. And we will start off with Dr. Sudha. Dr. Sudha, can you just give us some insights on urbanization and the trends? Because we see that increasing uh, population and housing uh, problems. So what is your take on that, especially with respect to sustainable development goals? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ansman. This is a quite a very important topic that we are uh, going to discuss today. So we talk about democracy and we talk about the rights of people. What we need to understand is that along with guaranteeing political rights to, uh, to the citizens, giving socio-economic justice is very, very important. So when we talk about the life of an individual, the life of a citizen, what we see is he has to live a good life. Otherwise, he is just going to exist. He is not going to live. So that becomes a responsibility of, uh, of the state, not only of the society, but also of the state. So when we are talking about uh, increase in population, we are going, or we are going to talk about development. What we see is definitely there is going to be a lot of change in the way in which we are going to live life. And that is where the very, uh, you know, concept of urbanization comes in where we see a lot of movement of people. Right from ancient times, what we would have seen is, we would have read is that people went in search of places where there was water, the ancient civilizations that we have seen. Today, as there's more and more development, uh, we see people going in search of uh, livelihood. They want to earn their living. And when they are uh, migrating from the place where they are living, so they are going in search of uh, uh, their employment. And that is where this entire uh, process of urbanization happens, where you see that people from the rural areas, they come to the urban areas in search of uh, better jobs, better employment. And they also want to settle down near to their workplace. That's the point. So... Uh, in many discussions, we talk about, you know, the disadvantages or the problems of urbanization. But what I would say is that urbanization is not a problem, it's a process. It's not going to stop. And it is a process that's there in all the countries. Almost all countries of the world have to handle urbanization because people are going to move, the population is going to increase and they are going to, as there is, an increase in population, the percentage of households that are going to be there, probably not formal ones in the cities, are going to increase. It will not increase uh, exactly as per the percentage of the population. It will be more. So that is a process which has to be handled. And also, as ma'am was asking me, when you talk about the Sustainable Development Goal, this is a universal uh, issue where all countries have to address it and what we see is goal 11 of the sustainable development goals it is talking about making cities inclusive safe sustainable and resilient so you need to have a an inclusive development and uh, a very beautiful fact is that the city the the migrant is moving to the city he needs the city but the city also needs the migrant. When we have the development, the city is in need of organized and unorganized labor. So that is, that is how a development would happen. 
I will take this point, uh, the sustainable development goal of uh, the 11th goal <coughs> and hand over to you, Dr. Divian, uh, because we know that a third of the population is in uh, cities as far as India is concerned. So the growing uh, population, overcrowding, what are your concerns regarding this? The first point which comes to mind concerning uh, urbanization uh, across the cities in India is the urban sprawl. Uh, that's a term which they use in order to depict the growth of the population as well as the geographical area of uh, urbanization. But then the fact always remains is that uh, the uh, idea of an urban sprawl should be uh, directly proportional to the economic sustainability of a, a city. Now, the industries which are already operating in the city, uh, are they able to sustain the ever-increasing urban sprawl, that is the population as well as the geographical area? Now, that is where the focus of all the urban problem comes in. So, in that sense, uh, how does the urban sprawl uh, contribute to the growth of the city, the prospects, as well as the problems concerning urbanization? So, that's what comes to my mind. To me. Uh, so, and secondly, of course, the psychology of an urbanite in India is that to prefer the most urbanized geographical area that is called as the urban impulsion, where people would like to locate themselves where the city amenities are the best. Now, that also creates a lot of problems uh, for the city because they would like to stay in a place where all the amenities are available. So, in that sense, uh, we are talking in terms of multi-level uh, problems and prospects in a city, uh, which of course increases the scope for research in social sciences, especially uh, public administration, political science, sociology, and of course uh, the uh, you know uh, studies in media, because how the media uh, generates information concerning the city life uh, becomes absolutely vital. Oh, that's really relevant. Uh, so I would like to take that point of urban sprawl. Uh, with urban sprawl, with uh, overpopulation, may also uh, lead to a new uh, concern, which is environment. So, uh, because of urban heat, there is an environment concern. So, if you see, uh, Delhi is uh, one of the most polluted and also is going to be one of the most populous uh, cities right, amongst uh, the global cities. So, that is also a growing concern because uh, urbanization has its positives, but with the increase of population, what do you think will be the environment hazards? Well, environmental hazards are going to be uh, huge. Uh, before coming to that, I would like to quote from the new uh, climate economy report, where they say that better and smarter urban growth, if we plan it well, then we have a huge economic opportunity for India. Precisely, we are talking about the GDP going up by 6% by 2050 if it is planned well. Now, as Professor Divian pointed out, if the current poor planning and poor sprawling continues, we would probably uh, have an estimated uh, $330 billion to $1.8 trillion loss. That would be the cost uh, that we would be paying. So, if we have to understand, put this data into perspective, at the household level, this equates to more than 20% of average household incomes. So just imagine the kind of impact that we are going towards. So this is on one side. On the other side, uh, we touched upon overcrowding. So uh, you pointed out about uh, how uh, pollution issues are there in uh, Delhi. If we just uh, talk about, you know, the residential spaces, because when, I, when we talk about urbanization, the residential spaces are very, very important. So... Mumbai has only about 30 square feet per person. So this is substantially very less and, and we are inherently, uh, you know, um, customized to, you know, always uh, put every data in comparison with China. And if we have to do that, although we have overtook China's population, it is a quarter of comparable availability in urban China. So what are we talking about? We have to talk about first availability of living space for our citizens. That's very important. And to just touch upon a little bit around uh, pollution, uh, India annually loses around 2% of GDP because of air pollution. So Delhi 
is one of the major concerns for us. There are other areas as well. And if we have to substantiate a little bit more about outdoor air pollution in Indian cities, it is estimated to cause around 1.1 million premature deaths per year. So this is these statistics should actually awaken us, make us more uh, robust in terms of planning urbanization very carefully. And globally also, if we see, we are on top. There are about, uh, I think, eight or nine cities reported in the global uh, pollution database. So all these are very, very uh, major concerns, major deterrents to living conditions. I think the human rights of people also should be acknowledged as citizens of India. There should be very careful monitoring, policy formulation, and a lot of uh, green initiatives should be launched. I think uh, the Niti Aayog has uh, proposed an urban planning uh, prospect uh, so that they can increase the capacity building and other competency building aspects so that the cities can be strengthened. Uh, so we're looking at that, uh, now we can see that we had discussed on overpopulation, then we are talking about environmental hazards, we are talking about the housing spaces. Uh, so naturally the topic on health hazards come because we have seen that uh, the pandemic has revealed a lot of other issues of urbanization and migration. So what do you think could be the possible prospect? One aspect is the government policies which are uh, advocated, could be advocated a little more so that it could reach out to the uh, dwellers, urban dwellers. But at the same time, uh, what as uh, citizens, what what uh, what is the role of the community uh, uh, to e emphasize that urbanization uh, is good but at the same time challenging? Well, uh, the fi final point which it boils down to is basically to do with the, uh, the attitude of an urbanite. When you're talking in terms of awareness, the urban citizen is more aware than the rural person. And of course, when you're talking in terms of responsiveness or responsibility, there, there seems to be a subtle difference between some of the Western uh, countries' urban areas and uh, especially India. Or for that matter, if you take uh, Chennai for that matter, uh, you see that uh, there is a kind of a run of the mill uh, uh, life of an urbanite where they are not able to uh, respond properly to government policies, especially policies which are uh, brought ch fan channeled through the uh, corporation as such. And uh, what are the uh, uh, policies which are, they are uh, likely to benefit and from which they are not able to benefit? There is not a proper kind of a unified forum which the uh, citizens in uh, the urban areas have in order to highlight uh, or for that matter even uh, give sanction to their uh, sanction to their uh, grievances that that's also not there so therefore uh, uh, aware i mean uh, well aware citizen and uh, a, a kind of enlightened citizenship yes. is what is needed and also now it brings out to a new issue because we are talking about the attitude of the urban dwellers then we spoke about the geographical as spatial uh, prob management problems but also the health hazards, the environmental uh, issues. But now it boils down to one point, the economic uh, factors. So uh, rightly, uh, Professor Vasuprada brought out the GDP value. What about the human development indexes, which is fluctuating? So it also comes to the aspect of poverty. So uh, the poverty and un unemployment rate is also uh, increasing. That's a challenge, in fact. So uh, what could be the possible solution in order to reduce such concerns? Concerns uh, 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 concerning the uh, employment. Employment. Area. Well, when you're talking in terms of the city, uh, the focus has predominantly been on the blue collar job people, those who are in, engaged in manual labor and they draw their uh, pay day, on a daily basis. And they are the ones uh, who are more uh, concerned because they are the, the vulnerable section of the population. But there is also the problem of the white collared uh, jobs, which are steadily sink shrinking in the city as such, simply because there are a number of uh, white collar job eligible uh, employees who do not find employment in the city because the economy of the city is not able to uh, 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 in, uh, you know, include them. Yes. Uh, that so now it problem. brings down to another point, which is uh, sustainability, and uh, also the issue of migration. 
Uh, and we, uh, we heard from the Professor Sudha that uh, migration is an issue because it's always uh, a transitional society. Uh, there are movements of migration. So it's not a steady uh, migration. It uh, sometimes reflects and reverses migration. We saw it in the pandemic where people had to move out and facilities were not provided. So what kind of um, a measure can be adopted for migrants like this? Yeah, see, when we um, approach this entire uh, process, uh, what we see is that the, the issue of poverty, for example. If you're going to talk about poverty, poverty in a rural area is different from poverty in an urban area. That's the point. Uh, probably, I would even say that when people are in their own village, they would even be self-sufficient. But they will not stop with that, right? Everyone wants development. Everyone wants to uh, earn more. So they just want to leave that place and they come out. And when we are understanding urbanization, we need to also understand the different class of people. Professor Divyan was talking about the blue-collar, the white-collar people. See, both have issues. That's the uh, point. You see a lot of... Uh, apartments coming up in the cities these days, which would not have been the trend earlier. So what is the fact? More and more people are here to work and we don't have space. So we are, if you want to buy, a, uh, buy an apartment at a higher, you know, uh, elevated uh, floor, you in fact have to pay more to buy that, right? So the entire concept has changed. Now, these, the white collar jobs, people with white collar jobs, probably they are managing uh, they are also aware to some extent, but the concern is more of people who are not much educated. They are unskilled laborers and they will just find their own job. You just can't uh, even have a proper data of what is, because we were also discussing about the economic status and their living, their housing and uh, their life in the city. So what happens is, uh, these are challenges. This is a challenge for our government even to find out uh, what job is one particular person doing and he's not going to be there in the same job. Whatever he gets every day, he's going to go for that. So when that is the fact, uh, we need to address uh, issues like, you know, what is the identity, right? And uh, how, how are we going to handle the health hazards and other issues that are going to come up with the overcrowding? Right? We need to address sanitation, we need to address uh, health care, right? space that people are going to have. So these are uh, great challenges for the local government. And uh, in the, so the, even the approach is different. Earlier they would want to make uh, these slums, you know, upgrade the slums or something like that. But now it is uh, an approach where they go and resettle these people at other places. If you are going to resettle them, what is their access to the resources, right? How are they going to get their jobs? So I think uh, you need to look at it from an individual perspective, from a societal perspective, from a state's uh, responsibility. All of us have to come together. And the first uh, effort is to understand this process right, right? You may not uh, be able to have one policy, for, uh, for all these issues in the urban area. So we need to address it, which yes. leads to the research that Dr. Professor Divyan was talking to us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I also uh, noticed that uh, you drew the spotlight on slums. Uh, slum clearance is one aspect. And also we see that media attention on slums. Uh, we see a lot of movies on uh, slum, slum areas, like the slum dot millennia or Salam Bombay, or so many other movies which is uh, bringing uh, attention to the slums. Uh, it's just uh, a fashion statement, but as actually is something happening? What is your opinion, opinion uh, Professor Vasuprada? Um, media has a huge responsibility. Uh, media should be very conscious of what they are projecting on screen. Often uh, they tend to romanticize, you know, uh, the crime that happens in our slum areas, they often uh, tend to, you know, project a very different scenario as if the people living there are 
from some other you know universe uh, i think uh, that leads to a lot of discrimination and uh, it it should be a very very uh, consciously thought out uh, media policy first of all so that we get the right picture of how they are uh, so this is on one side on the other side what is happening is i see the tourism industry capitalizing on slums so as you rightly pointed out slum dog millennia uh, it really did uh, create a huge impact the daravi slum in mumbai it has become a hot tourist destination open any application anything it could be your agoda or it could be your make your make, make my trip in any of these applications any of the tourist agents uh, websites you just take a scroll through it you'll realize that there will be one or the other tour of the daravi slum the question that i am raising now is yes popular culture has popularized these slums there are a lot of them um, you know uh, conducting tours like this so it is an opportunity for them to earn a lot of money what is actually being done to these societies there we are using them we are commodifying them we are popular popularizing their culture but are we doing anything to actually increase their uh, you know state of living yeah. their lifestyle are we doing anything to address their lifestyle issues their sanitation that when i'm talking about sanitation brings me back to uh, a very very uh, important uh, point on uh, scavenging manual scavenging are we eliminating that in our uh, urban spaces we are not doing that it is actually not a very expensive thing to do it is uh, just taking a little bit of you know a uh, policy formulation allowances for certain uh, uh you know subsidies in these zones that will enable a better living for those of them who are involved in sanitation work i think uh, this uh, actually uh, is bringing a lot of uh, solutions to the urban challenges which we are di- discussing because i strengthening the policy is one aspect also community participation uh we saw during the chennai floods also when uh, when the government was taking time to take action it was the community's uh, proactiveness that was able to save the city itself even uh, when it came to uh, the covid also the uh, the participation from the community and also the role of the governments uh, both of them integrating together brought out good policies so uh, what is your take on that uh, professor devian well uh... there are uh, three levels of governance of course uh, and uh, the the third one of course would be quite different the first of course we are talking in terms of administration that is the central administration then the state but then the third the most important local which is in a city municipal municipal administration municipal administration is unlike state administration or central administration uh, the way in which uh, councillors are being elected uh the the sentiment behind their election is not the same as state or center they are being elected for a ref- different purpose altogether and that purpose is municipal function the word municipal is not a simple term it has a lot of conceptual meaning behind it and that is where the question of uh, the participation of the public servants and the public in general becomes absolutely vital and uh, this is where Uh, a lot of effort has gone in concerning the new uh, you know urban uh, local governance system which has come into force after the 74th constitutional amendment uh, much has to be done uh, because there are a lot of communication gaps between the political uh, office of the councillors and the people as such and the various forums if you take the urban settlement each urban settlement has a forum of their own but what is the connection between them and the formal uh, local governance system uh, that and of course again it provides a lot of scope for research where there can be positive participation the, the, this is where i think a lot of uh, thought and brainstorming sessions need to be done yes and also it also bring to the point that uh, we need to have public participation and also public private uh, uh, integration so some kind of engagement uh so that there is more uh, prospects and also more uh, progress and uh, sudha ma'am you had told about progress the urbanization should be progress so when we are talking about progress definitely the uh, talk about infrastructure is coming we see that all the cities are 
coming up with lot of infrastructure programs and development. But at the same time, there is a, a problem of uh, underdevelopment because uh, you see that the migrants are not uh, settled properly. And at the same time, there are issues of uh, crime uh, erupting. So what is your take on that, uh, Professor see, Sudha? Yeah. See, you always use the word safe, making cities safe. So how safe is it for these people over here? <clears throat> if you just walk around uh, some of our uh, you know, roads in the city, you will see uh, street children. You will see children who are just, uh, maybe they have some, some uh, product in hand and they are trying to sell it to uh, people or something like that. You see both boys and girls. Right. So that is a sight which is a little fearful when you see that. Right. So that if a person, we had taken an effort to find out, you know, where is the house of this child. Uh, it, it was just near the, you know, the main road, but then it is, it's a very informal arrangement. So it's almost like being homeless. Yes. And uh, then comes the safety aspect where uh, there are many, many challenges, especially for women. So there is always a, a feeling that uh, the people settled like this are the ones who are involved in crime, right? They are more, they, may, they could be involved in crime. But studies have also revealed that they are more vulnerable than committing the crime because there is no mechanism by which, you know, uh, there is any kind of a redressal mechanism is not there. And awareness, that leads us to another point where how do we create awareness? How do we find out what is their educational status? Uh, most of them would be literates, right? So probably the next generation. So a lot of studies that we are talking about, I think we need to take a lot of effort to find out the social, social status of these people, right? And, and also we can think about the technology, the role of technology. Now we are, we are in that progress of digital India. So uh, how can technology help uh, the vulnerable people in the society, the marginalized uh, society? What do you think? What's your take on it, Professor? Um, technology is a very important aspect that we need to deliberate upon because our entire growth and development has been techno-social. That is, if technology develop, we develop. For instance, uh, we have uh, equipments like television, we have equipments like uh, telephones, which were made a development marker. Today, digitalization is a development marker. Do you remember your pagers that we used to use? It's nowhere today. Because that was not given emphasis at the policy formulation stage. Number of television sets one owned. Number of uh, telephones one owned. All these became metrics for development. So likewise for digitalization, digitization, be it for, uh, you know, e-content development in colleges, be it for, uh, you know, uh, converting uh, whatever is there in the physical archive into a digital archive, mm -hmm. you need policy to push. Yes, the community also has a role to play, but the community is going to be subservient because the state is the larger player here. So only when the state is pushing certain agendas, for example, Digital India, we have uh, a number of uh, policies that have been rolled out. So we also have the Digi Locker Scheme. If you take this Digi Locker Scheme, and if we are talking about the vulnerable population, especially those uh, in the fishing hamlets, yeah. the pr propensity to lose data, their important documents like their uh, ration card, their Aadhaar card is very high. And we saw that post tsunami. Yes. So if we are able to, uh, you know, uh, bring out some policies around uh, uh, making them understand that they could use such digital solutions, they could keep their documents safe, that's going to save a lot of time and energy. If in mm -hmm. case there's a disaster, it makes them better prepared for it. Yeah. Thank you very much for this enlightening discussion forum. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Mm -hmm.